Hey guys, it's Annabelle and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be moving the cymbidiums over from the old house, cleaning them off. They've been outside in the old greenhouse for a couple of years and I'm going to bring them inside into the conservatory. So we've got a few years worth of dead bugs and dirt and pests accumulated probably. So I'm starting off by giving them a little bath to kill any spider mites that are definitely living here. Um, I've struggled repeatedly with cymbidiums with spider mites because they live outside and I'm in an area where there's a lot of spider mites. Um, I tried introducing some like natural predator mites but they just seem to get outcompeted, I guess or overwhelmed by the sheer number of spider mites. So this is a little bath with a bit of neem oil and some dish soap. Just gonna dunk the whole things. It's not ideal, probably shouldn't be dunking the roots in this, but I'm so fed up of having to battle spider mites with them. Also definitely got like earwigs, slugs, snails, wood lice, pretty much everything has been living in these pots. They've been in semi-hydro um, with either lacquer or lacquer and perlite for um, several years now. The one that's been in um, a mix of lacquer and perlite is the smaller miniature cymbidium. I say miniature that they get to the same sort of size but they have smaller flowers so I'm just kind of gently rubbing the leaves making sure to coat the tops and bottoms of the leaves in this bathtub mixture and then I'm just going to leave them for like half an hour and keep kind of agitating them and dunking them um, in this to try and kill off anything that is living in these pots because I don't want to bring pests into the conservatory from outside um, so that is the state we're at. I'm just gonna leave them to soak in their little spa for a while. This is the dish soap I'm using, fairy, just standard dish soap, no horticultural soaps or anything. Um, I've since bought a Castile soap, Castile, something soap, um, which is supposed to be a little bit better for them, uh, hemp-based soap. But um, for these guys, I'm just gonna use some fairy. We just wanna nuke the spider mites, basically. So that's all done. They've been sitting in here for about half an hour. I've been like dunking them repeatedly. So now I'm gonna take them out and pot them up. So I've bought these pots from a local discount garden center. I wish they were white, but this is the best I could do. I think they were like three or four pounds each, um, which is pretty good. And these are 22 centimeters, I think. I'll just show you. Um, they're quite nice. The main thing with cymbidiums I find is just finding pots that are big enough that I can do semi-hydro in because most of my pots are a lot smaller and cymbidiums get huge, like absolutely huge um, as these ones are. So just finding space for them is an issue and finding pots that are big enough for them is also an issue. So um, just gonna put them into these pots that I've got relatively cheap because I don't wanna pay loads of money for my cymbidium pots because they will just grow out of them probably quite quickly. Next to my repot, I'm probably gonna have to start dividing or just keeping them outside. My cymbidiums have lived outside year round in the little wooden greenhouse that I had at the old house. Um, that is just in storage at the moment, so it's not been put up yet, which is why these guys are coming into the conservatory because I haven't got around to assembling the new greenhouse yet. And they've been kind of inside for too long, so they're not acclimatized, I think, anymore. I would shock them probably by putting them out. So just gonna lift them into the pots and I can see no signs at all of spider mites. You can see the damage from the spider mites, but when I'm rubbing the leaves, my hands are coming away clean. So I think we've got them all, hopefully, fingers crossed. You can see the root systems on these are pretty good. In my experience, cymbidiums do extremely well in semi-hydro. Um, they probably need to be planted a little bit deeper than the average plant in semi-hydro because they don't really enjoy dry top layers. They're often terrestrial or lithophytic. Um, mostly terrestrial, I think most species of cymbidiums are. They don't like dryness, they like plenty of moisture, so they, they love semi-hydro, it suits them perfectly once they can get their roots down into the reservoir and really drink as much as they like. Um, some people would say, why bother when you can plant them in basically soil or cocoa peat? Um, so really for me, it's sustainability. I want to be able to reuse my medium. I want to be able to wash. I want to be able to um, just keep the same medium indefinitely. There's an initial like cost associated with lacquer, um, but then there's an ease of growing, like a self-watering element. So you've got a constant reservoir of water. Um, there's aeration, so you never have to worry about keeping things too soggy or waterlogged. 
um, which the cymbidiums really enjoy and I think you would probably have to do slight wet dry cycles if you were keeping them in soil. Um, so this for me is just an easy, sustainable way of growing them. Um, I don't really want to use materials that are um, like single use and then I have to get rid of. I know you can compost bark and things but then you've got to buy more and I just, it doesn't sit well with me. Um, personally, personal preference, I've got nothing against people who grow that way at all. I want to make it very clear that while I grow in semi-hydro I completely respect all ways of growing and I would never like try and force this method or uh, say that this is the best way to grow to you. It's a personal choice and it's my personal preference of how I like to grow my orchids. And I can't say that this is going to work for everybody. As always it's heavily dependent on your environment, your personal preferences. So I just want to put that out there that um, while I'm growing this way, this isn't the only way to grow, obviously, and um, you've just got to find what works for you and what you're happy with and how you're happy growing um, and how your orchids are happy growing because for me this works and they are very happy so I would rather, if I can, grow in Lekka and be able to just reuse the medium um, because these guys are going to have to have huge, huge amounts of whatever potting medium you put in because <laughs> they're so big. So I'm just showering them off one final time. I really don't want any neem or soap left around the roots. I feel like it would be bad dehydrating or desiccating. I just don't like the, the idea of it sitting on the roots. I also have had bad experiences before where I bathed an orchid that had spider mites in like a similar kind of mix and I got the ratios a little bit off. There was a bit too much neem oil in there and um, it was a terrate leafed vanda and it pretty much died the next week. Not rot, but I think the neem stayed on it and like suffocated, blocked the stomata. Um, it was horrible and I don't want to repeat that experience. So I would just, if you're going to do something like this, make sure that there's no oily film left on the leaves or anything um, and just give them a quick wash off afterwards, I would because it's better safe than sorry. And that was a bit of a shock for me. And I hadn't considered the fact that obviously oils do clog stomata, they do clog the leaf up. Um, so just something to be aware of. So these guys are all showered off, potted up, and now I'm just gonna do a little bit of hair trimming on them. So as you see, we've got some kind of fungal spotting, some burns and some blackened leaf tips where I've, obviously they've been living outside. They've been subjected to temperatures from like 40 degrees Celsius down to like minus three degrees Celsius. They have been in a sheltered greenhouse. Um, I've kept them bone dry over the last few winters to make sure that the roots didn't freeze. It's taken its toll. These aren't perfect looking plants. And I feel like if you keep your plants outside in kind of harsh conditions, you're never gonna have perfect looking plants. Um, is something I'm kind of learning. Sorry if you can hear my cat yowling in the background. He's um, not happy that I've shut the bathroom door while I'm doing this. So I'm just gonna trim off all the blackened leaf tips. I don't believe this is any virus of any kind, um, but cymbidiums can obviously get cymbidium mosaic virus. So just obviously be careful with um, cross-contamination of tools. So I'm gonna wash these scissors down between each plant. Just gonna go along cutting off the obvious ugly kind of black tips, fungal spots, burns, that sort of thing, just to tidy them up a bit since they are coming into my conservatory and they will probably do a lot better inside. Um, I had to grow them outside out of necessity because they are huge, like huge, huge plants and I just didn't have room for them in, in my house before. So I'm just chopping that off. I've cleaned the scissors in between plants. Any um, burns that are kind of mid-leaf where there's still a lot of healthy leaf like downstream of the burn, I will just leave those leaves alone because the leaves obviously still healthy and it's still functioning. Uh, it's just I've got a few kind of spots on but there's not a lot I can do about that. Where it's leaf tips it's easy to cut off. That's all done, all tidied up and they're looking pretty good I think. So now the next step will be me potting them up. So down in the conservatory I'm going to start potting these guys up. I think I'm going to run out of um, Lekka, so I am going to mix in some other materials. They really don't care, honestly. Um, so this is the smallest cymbidium that I got as a seedling, which is Cymbidium parnes. I got this one um, from Burnham Nurseries as like a sale plant when they were at the only show I've ever attended. Um, and they had this like as a little, little baby. I guess it was a seedling. I think it was too small to be a division. So I'm just gonna reuse some of the um, mixtures of Lekka and Ceramis that I've got. And for now, I'm gonna put it into this little um, vase here. This might not be ideal long-term, 
but I've just checked and I don't have enough lacquer to actually fill this big pot that I bought for it. So um, we're gonna have to improvise a little bit and use a smaller container until I can order some more lacquer. Then maybe I'll up pot it depending on how we're doing. So I'm just gonna pour the mix of lacquer, pumice, ceramis um, into this pot. This is more like a terrestrial mix compared to what it's been in before. This one was in a mix of lacquer and perlite. When I got it out, the perlite was just like broken down. Obviously these roots, they develop very extensive root systems extremely fast, which means that whatever medium is in there gets like crushed. If it's a hard material like lacquer, all that means is it's very difficult to get them out of the pot. But with perlite, it was just kind of like a sludge. The roots are great there, as you saw, um, but they, they're quite happy with a final mix, I guess is the point of that. Um, but perlite long-term isn't, I don't think, a very good thing. Uh, obviously it's fine in potting mixes, but not like a sustainable long-term thing. It just kind of sludges when the roots put pressure on it. So that's all done. Now we're gonna move on to my next cymbidium. So this is my biggest, oldest cymbidium. Um, it has flowered for me before, but I've always been a bit limited because I've kept them outside. They don't really love it. Like they don't want to be freezing. Uh, it's lived as you can see. Um, but it's not been ideal for it. So I'm just going to fill this um, pot up with a mix of lecca and some other materials, whatever I have that will fill the pot basically. I'm using a lot of leftovers for this, my mixes that I don't want to sort the pumice or ceramics out of, I am just um, putting straight in here. So last but not least, this cymbidium is kind of the second cymbidium that I purchased, got a great root system. And at this point, I'm actually pretty much out of lacquer. I have a little bit left, about half a pot. So I'm actually gonna take this opportunity to trial a new material that I've been kind of looking for an opportunity to use. This is an aquarium substrate. Um, so it's designed to be like pH neutral and not leach salts into the aquatic system, but it kind of looks like baby lacquer to me. And I, I feel like it's a cross between lacquer and ceramis in its structure and maybe a ceramis alternative for people in the US. Yeah, there's a few bird feathers in here too. Um, this has been stored beneath my bird cage. Um, so it's kind of like a granular circular substrate. It's quite interesting looking. So I'm going to trial it and see, because I mean, my cymbidiums have done well in perlite before, so I can't see any reason they wouldn't do well in this. It's kind of like almost a inorganic soil. So just going to now add in the mix of the tiny um, aquatic aquarium substrate into the mix. And I've put a bottom layer of lacquer because I don't want to waste this small substrate sat at the bottom in the reservoir where it doesn't really matter what's in there because it's going to be water, whatever it is. Um, so I've just washed this, but I've obviously not washed it very well because it is still dusty. Um, so I will flush through all of these thoroughly after I've finished the repot. Ideally I should have gone through like a soaking period for a couple of days with this new substrate first but I'm kind of um, improvising here since I'm nearly out of lacquer so I've mixed this in to kind of make my lacquer go further as well. At this point though the lacquer is kind of almost irrelevant because those air gaps between the lacquer are going to be filled by that smaller substrate anyway so if you mix a very small substrate with a very large substrate it's kind of cancelling out the the effect of the large one because the large substrate just means you've got more air pockets but if you're filling that up with the smaller material then that's kind of negated um, so really the lacquer here is a bulking agent I guess I'm nearly out of it so um, between the two this is kind of a trialing of the smaller one mainly um, but we'll see how it does I can't see it not doing well to be honest because I've been growing them in, in perlite um, with my smaller one and that's done excellently and maybe had the best root systems. So um, I'm sure it'll be fine. And I'm for now just gonna use a top layer of like cobblestones. Uh, I'm out of normal gravel, which I would usually use. Um, so this will just act as like a barrier, like a non-wicking top layer for them. They are a little bit heavy though. So usually I wouldn't probably use these. I would use like a small grade gravel. Now that I finished repotting, since it's a sunny day, I'm actually gonna hose these down. So this will just flush through the material that I didn't thoroughly wash through properly. Um, flush any bits of perlite that were left floating after their bath time that have come up from the root system uh, where they were attached to the perlite. 
Um, also any spider mites that made it through their bath and then shower will now obviously get a second showering. Hopefully this will nuke the spider mites because constant, constant spider mite battle with these guys. Absolute spider mite magnets in my area. Uh, keeping them outside obviously hasn't helped that. And you can see a lot of the leaf damage on the underside of the leaves on this one is spider mite damage where they, they obviously nibble and bite and create wounds and then that creates like an opportunity for further infection, that sort of thing. So it just makes them look very unattractive. Um, they seem pretty tough. It's not like it's drained the energy from the plant in the same way that, for example, an oncidium with spider mites. Sometimes they will really go downhill because the spider mites are like almost completely draining the plant. Cymbidium seem much tougher but yeah, it's not ideal, is it? So I'm just flushing these through, um, filling the pots right up with water so that the water actually comes up above the stones and the stones are very great for helping with flushes as well because they kind of try and keep some of the lecker in place. Obviously I've got some lecker floating up here. Um, so I'm just gonna keep doing that, flushing them through. I'll do a few flushes. This is with hose water, um, which is obviously the same as my tap water. So we're looking at about 250 to 280 ppm, a lot of calcium and magnesium in there. It's maybe not ideal for me to use constantly with orchids in inorganic materials, but for flushes, for washes, it's absolutely fine. Um, it, over time, it would cause a salt buildup if I was gonna use this with my fertilizer, that sort of thing. Um, cymbidiums, they are really, really heavy feeders. Um, they love a lot of calcium so I don't think tap water would bother them at all, honestly. Um, a lot of recommendations are to actually feed cymbidiums at double strength. I don't, but I know that people, some people do. So I think cymbidiums are just, they just love a lot of nutrients, a lot of calcium, a lot of magnesium. They're very large, um, fast growing orchids, obviously. So I guess they're gonna be using a lot of nutrients. So I'm just gonna flush these through a few more times and then I'll show you the end result. So a couple of months after that repot, I've come back, I'm editing the video and just wanted to film a quick update. So um, I found some things I just wanted to show you guys and you're gonna have to excuse, it's gonna be a bit of a messy video update. Um, but just beneath this stone here, I can see something that I think might be a spike. Um, so I'm just going to move that stone out of the way and hope that that spike finds its way up because new growths, in my experience, tend to be more... Um, by now you kind of see the little like leaf joins appearing almost, so I think that that is a spike. Um, and I think there's another one around the other side as well, let me just show you. Uh, I'm just going to put the light on. So there's a little point starting there. And then also obviously this point here blocked by a leaf. So I think I have three spikes on this one, which will be a first for, I've never rebloomed this one before. I've rebloomed the other one, the larger one. And this is my little one. Um, again, it's got a thing starting. Not sure what that is. I think it possibly is a spike, I don't know. Um, and then my big one as well, I've noticed something starting on that. Um, but I might have to try and free it because I think it might be getting stuck. So I think they're looking okay. I have had a bit of yellowing where I've been watering quite irregularly at the moment. I'm trying to uh, redecorate the house and things are just getting a little bit on top of me. So um, I've been a bit neglectful of these guys, but luckily they don't seem to care, except for uh, there's a dandelion in this pot as well, which I'm gonna have to take out that'll come back because i'm not going to be able to get the roots out but yeah so this thing is stuck it's going to try and gently kind of wiggle my finger behind it and gently kind of free it we might end up with a spike snapping here just very gently wiggle it free i think that's about as good as i'm going to get because it's actually bent over where it's grown into the plant um so hopefully that'll just free it enough that it can get out I think that's all. There might be some more hidden in here. This plant is kind of a bush, so it's a bit difficult to navigate. And um, you'll be pleased to hear that the spider mites never came back. So we well and truly killed them. 
Um, the conservatory is a little bit of a mess right now where I've been doing so many repots and things. But yeah, that is a little update on my cymbidiums um, in addition to their spa day. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I'm going to hopefully be putting out more regular content now and getting through my pile of things to be edited. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching today and for sticking with me. Any comments, leave them down below and I'll be interested to hear what you think about the spike or if you think they're growths. And I'll see you guys all later. And I hope that everybody watching is staying safe and well and healthy. Have a great day. Bye.